Scriptable objects are a fantastic tool given to us by Unity for our project. They're these little data packets, these little data prefabs that we get to use throughout our project. And if you're not familiar with scriptable objects, you might want to pause the video, go search on Google, go, go search on YouTube. There's a ton of resources and a ton of different ways to use them. I'm a big fan personally, and I use them throughout my project. Instead, what I want to talk about in this video is one of the catches, one of the tricks, one of the problems that people often run into when they're using scriptable objects. And that is resetting data that's been changed in play mode in the editor. I don't know if you've noticed around here, but I don't very often do sponsored videos, and there's a lot of good reasons for that. That said, almost every video on this channel, while it doesn't have a sponsor, it does have an inspiration. And those inspirations are my own personal projects. I see some part of that project that I think is worth sharing, and I make a video. And this video is no different. So if you found videos on this channel useful and you want to support the channel, check out the links to the Steam and the Itch page for Deep Space Directive in the description down below. If you change the data on a scriptable object at runtime or in play mode in the Unity editor and then leave play mode, those changes will persist out of play mode. You can go back into play mode and those changes are still there. Now, if you haven't run into this, that might sound like strange behavior, especially if you're relatively new to Unity. But the same behavior works for any asset, such as a material. If you go into play mode, change the color on a material, leave play mode, that change to that color will persist outside of play mode. Doesn't matter how many times you go in and out, that change will persist. Now, there's a lot of people out there who would argue that you shouldn't change values on a scriptable object at runtime, and that's fair enough. I would argue, on the other hand, that there are use cases. There are some use cases where it's a good idea or it's really useful and helpful to be able to change values on a scriptable object at runtime. But the problem comes in that you then, when you leave play mode or you leave runtime, you need to reset the, that data. You need to reset those values so that the next time you go into play mode, you're starting with those fresh values. And that's that's a problem that I have run into. I'm running into that with my stats and my upgrade system. And now I knew that was going to be a problem when I designed those systems, but that was a problem for future me. That was a problem that I would solve down the road. I knew it was a solvable problem. I just didn't know how to solve it. So I figured I'd solve it when that time came. And the time has come. So as you do, when you have a problem, you get on Google and you do some searching and you see how other people solve that problem. And what I found was two ways. One, I had no idea that it would work. Another idea that I just hadn't thought about, but those two ways work really well to reset that data. So let's look at those next. So the first method to reset your scriptable object data is not the method I chose, but it was a method that I didn't know existed. And so I think it's worth sharing. That is that somewhere along the lines, somewhere in Unity 2017, Unity added some of the lifecycle functions from mono behavior to scriptable objects. And I had no idea that they had done that. They've done that years ago. What that means is that scriptable objects will have callbacks to awake, on enable, on disable, and on destroyed. But the catch is, is that they're called at times that make sense, but feel different when you're used to the mono behavior lifecycle. The awake gets called when the scriptable object gets created. Now we can create scriptable objects at runtime, but most of us are doing it outside of runtime. So we're not gonna see that call uh, while we're playing or while we're testing. So that's not a reliable place to reset your data. On enable gets called when the resource gets loaded. And that's going to happen any time that scriptable object goes into the scene or has referenced in the scene. So that's going to be a reliable place to reset our data on enable. Just blank out your fields, do whatever you need there on, on enable. On disable, you can guess, is going to get called whenever that scriptable object gets unloaded. So again, it's going to be a reliable place to reset our data. That's going to happen every time you go in and out of play mode. On destroyed, again, gets called when that scriptable object gets destroyed. You're not going to see that happen unless you're creating those scriptable objects at runtime, in which case this is just not an issue. One further oddity to this is that when you go into play mode, Unity unloads all the scriptable objects and then reloads them. So what I saw is that on disable gets called and then on enable gets called when you enter play mode. A little odd, but again, either one gets called or rather both of them get called when you enter play mode. So they're both potentially reliable ways to reset data in a scriptable object. So method number two, this one's really simple and really easy to use, and it addresses the uh, root of this issue and the root of the confusion. In a mono behavior, if you have a private field, that data is not serialized or it's not saved. So if you go into play mode, the value is reset. If you leave play mode, the value gets reset. That is unless you decorate that field with the serializable field attribute, which a lot of us do all the time. It's a very useful thing to do. On scriptable objects, on the other hand, 
private fields are serialized. So you go into play mode, change the value of a private field, leave play mode, that value of that private field is saved, it gets serialized. So all we have to do to avoid that behavior is decorate that field with a non-serialized attribute. That's it, that's it. All we gotta do is add a single attribute to the fields that we don't want to save. Any field that you might be changing the value of at runtime and you want to reset, simply add the non-serialized attribute and you're good to go. So there you go. I hope that was interesting and better yet useful for you and your project. Until next time, happy game designing. I don't know if that's just rambly bullshit.